Hi everyone, Andrew here. So uh, in this video, we're gonna we're gonna start building a simple gizmo system um, that will allow us to click on different game objects and assign the click object to uh, a, sp a specific gizmo. So this time around, uh, we're gonna have uh, a single gizmo active in the scene, yeah, and uh, that gizmo will change its target object based on the object that we click on. Um, more than that, uh, we're gonna implement a system uh, where we can actually change the active gizmo based on um, the key that we're currently pressing. Yeah, so similar to the Unity editor, when you press the W key, uh, it activates the move gizmo. Yeah, uh, E key activates rotation, R activates scale. Yeah, so we're gonna pretty much do the same thing. Now I'm gonna open up uh, Visual Studio, and I have all the code. I have actually already uh, written it here um, almost all of it yeah I have some stuff which is currently uh, uh, you know um, commented but um, so this is mostly gonna be just a discussion of, of, of this code and try to understand what it, what it does and it's not actually that complicated uh, probably the most important uh, thing in this discussion is the set enabled function which allows you to enable or disable a gizmo yeah so uh, let's see currently if I'm to just switch to play mode you can see that we get uh, th there are four gizmos here. Yeah, all the gizmos just reside in this position right here. Uh, this is because in the start function I create these gizmos, and I don't specify a target object for uh, for these gizmos. Yeah, so they, they're created, and then uh, the plugin just places them at uh, the at the origin by default. Yeah, position uh, vector uh, zero. So uh, what I want to do first is I just want to make sure that whenever we press play, those gizmos are, are initially disabled. So uh, for this, I'm going to be using the set enabled function uh, object gizmo dot gizmo dot set enabled false. Yeah. So uh, if you remember from uh, our discussion in the previous video, uh, these are all actually gizmo behaviors that are attached to a gizmo instance. Yeah. Gizmo is the equivalent of game object in Unity, and these guys are pretty much like Gizmo behaviors are pretty much the same thing as model behaviors, yeah, but for Gizmos. Yeah, so we're accessing the Gizmo object. Um, so we're accessing the, the Gizmo that owns the behavior, and we're disabling it. And we have to do the same thing for all the Gizmos here. Rotation, scale, and the universal Gizmo, right? And now, if I press uh, play, nothing shows up, yeah? Okay, cool. Now, uh, what I wanna do is, whenever I press the left mouse button and click on an object, I want to actually activate the gizmo, right? So, um, let me just, yeah, I'm gonna uncomment in the, in the update function. Uh, I have these lines of code here. Uh, I first check if the left mouse button is pressed, and if it's pressed, then I pick a game object in the scene using the pick game object function. Uh, this function just basically builds a, it constructs a ray from the from the mouse position, and then it casts the ray into the scene. And if it hits anything, it returns the game object that was hit. Otherwise, it returns null. Yeah. So if no object is hit, it returns null. Um, what we also have here, we have uh, we have an enum which. Um, basically is used to differentiate between different types of gizmos yeah so we have a move rotate scale and universal values and then we have uh we store the current gizmo id here in a member member variable yeah this is the id of the gizmo which is actually which is currently active the one which is showing up yeah? and uh, this is the actual uh work gizmo this is uh, so basically this is a reference to one of these yeah when you press w the work gizmo is going to be set to the move gizmo uh, e is going to set it to rotation r to scale and t to universal right and then we have the target object which is basically the same uh, which is basically the um uh, you know the object that gets picked in the scene yeah so we first pick uh, we, we first pick a game object and then if if the picked object is not the same as the target object it means that the, it means that we need to change the target object yeah so it, it means we, we actually picked the new game object and we call the on target object changed uh, function and we pass the picked object as the is the only parameter and what we do here is actually pretty simple we store the new target object if we actually picked anything the target object will be 
not null yeah and uh, what we do in that case is we set the target object for all the gizmos and we make sure that the work gizmo is enabled yeah uh, when this function will first be called the work gizmo will actually be disabled yeah uh, and so we need to make sure that we enable it if the target object is null, it means that we actually clicked in the air. So nothing is, um, the, the target object is null, we, there, there's nothing that uh, we can do. In that case, we can just uh, deactivate all the gizmos. Yeah, we, we hide all the gizmos. We just make sure that all of them are um, hidden. Um, all right, so let's just see how this works for now. Uh, I'm initializing here in the start function, I'm initializing the work gizmo and the work gizmo ID to, to the move gizmo. Yeah? So uh, currently we're going to start off with the move gizmo. When we actually click on a game object, the move gizmo is, uh, is going to show up. So let's see how this works. I'm going to press play. Yeah? If I click on subject, you see we get the move gizmo. Now I click on another object and you can see the, the move gizmo automatically moves on this object. Uh, this is because when the when the when the when the when a new game object is picked, we call on target object changed, and we set the target object here. Yeah, for all the gizmos, and the set target object function, um, aside from actually associating the gizmo with the target object, what it also does it it, it recalculates the position and rotation of the gizmo um, to to reflect this change. Yeah, so it will just place the gizmo on the object. Now there's there's uh, some details involved here such as the transform space and the transform pivot but these will actually be covered in, in separate videos. Yeah. Uh, Alright and now what we want to do is we just want to uh, we just want to make sure that um, we we can switch between different gizmos using the keyboard. Yeah. So I'm just gonna uncomment these um, these lines of code here and uh, I have like four um, checks, W, E, R, T. And for each one of those checks, I call the set work gizmo ID uh, with the corresponding gizmo ID. Yeah, so for W, we have move, E, rotate, R, scale, and T, universal. Yeah? And so a set work gizmo is uh, it's pretty basic. It's, it's just, we, we first check if this is, um, you know, if the work gizmo ID is the same as the current ID. Yeah, this can happen like if, for example, if the move gizmo is currently active and you keep pressing W, the IDs are gonna be the same. Yeah, so there's no need to go to move forward if the IDs are the same. Um, then what we do is we start off with a clean slate and deactivate all the gizmos. Yeah, we want, we want only one gizmo to be active. And uh, then what we do is we just analyze the gizmo ID and we adjust the reference of the work gizmo. Yeah? So based on the gizmo ID, we set the work gizmo to either the move, rotation, scale, or universal gizmo. And then finally, if, if we do actually have a target object, we activate the work gizmo. Yeah? Uh, this check here is important because you might change the work gizmo when no target object is available. Yeah? So maybe you haven't clicked on any objects. Uh, in that case, target object will be null, and uh, we don't want to show the gizmo in that case. Yeah, so we only show the, we only enable the gizmo if the target object is, uh, if, if, you know, if it's if it's valid. Yeah. All right. So um, you can actually access this file uh, in the um, runtime transform gizmos scripting tutorials. Uh, as I said before, this, that, that's where you'll be able to find all the, uh, the scripts and um, associated scenes. And um, you're gonna find a file similar to this and it's gonna contain um, lots of comments in which I'm gonna be explaining uh, what, what's actually happening here. Um, basically, uh, the, initially this video was meant to be a little bit uh, like really, really basic. I just wanted to show you how to enable and disable gizmos. However, uh, it's, uh, it, it's important to actually start working on, uh, on this simple gizmo manager uh, because that will actually uh, prove to be, um, you know, useful for for future tutorials. Uh, so we're going to use this class as like, uh, you know, we're going to use it as as we move as we move forward. Uh, all right, yeah. So uh, in the in the next in the next video, uh, because currently you've noticed we're we're using only a single target object. Yeah, uh, there is no way for us to currently uh, select multiple objects. Yeah. So in the next video, what I'm going to be doing, what we're going to be doing is we're going to actually have, a, we're going to implement support for a collection of objects. 
so that we can actually transform multiple objects at once. Yeah. Uh, okay, so that's that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I wish you a nice day. Bye bye.